BP Guru. Today we're going to be looking at setting up our interaction. Now we've got like item information in place. We want to create up a system where we can interact with objects uh, or like almost anything without really having to rely on overlaps. Because when you start working in bigger games, you'll start to experience issues where like if there's overlap with collision boxes, the game's going to get confused as to what to pick and what not to pick up. What we're going to do is I've created a new input. I've done this already because I have tested the system out. But um, I've created a new input action mapping and I've created the interact in here. And if you don't remember how to do that, it's go into input folder, go into actions, right click, go on to input and click on input action. There's nothing you have to do inside of it. You just need to create it. Go back into the input folder and click on the default IMC default add a new mapping, and then set it to the key bind you want. Once you've done that, we can start working around with this. So if we go into our Blueprints folder, we're going to right click, we're going to go to Blueprint, and we're going to go to Blueprint Interface. We're going to click on that, and we're just going to call it Interact underscore BPI. We're going to open that up. We're going to create a new function called Interact, and that's all we need for now we can close that down. The next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to do this first, is I'm going to create a new item or our object so that we know it's actually working. And we're going to go into actor. So we're going to create an actor BP. And we'll just call this cube underscore BP. And it's just purely for testing, uh, just like our health uh, reduction BP. Open up the cube. And all we need to add in is a, uh, a static mesh. We don't need anything else. Uh, and we'll just set this to any old cube. It really doesn't matter. We'll call it, we'll, we'll select the background cube. That's, oh God, that's very big, but it should be fine. Uh, where was the cube I had the first time I tested this? Uh, let's just put in cube and see what comes up. Cube, there we go, that looks better. And uh, we'll set this to, um, uh, where was it? We'll set it to this pink. It's fine. This will be okay. That's all we need to worry about for now. Delta Gen re uh, reference. And we'll compile that. Now, we don't need any overlap with this method. Um, what we do need to do is we need to uh, go to the event graph. And above, just where the event graph thing is, there's a thing that says class settings here. Click on that. And on the right-hand side here, it says implement interfaces. And if we go interact, it should come up. There's our interact BPI. And now we can access that function. And what we want to do is we want to right click and say uh, interact. And we should have that interact BPI um, uh, option there. But you can also go on the left hand side here and just double click this uh, interfaces interact here. And it'll create the event for you. And what we want to do is when this fires, we want to uh, we want to do a flip flop. This is just purely for testing, by the way. So you can almost bypass this as long, it's just to make sure your interaction is working. Um, we want it to to do a flip flop, and what we want to do is we want to get our static mesh object here, pull off, and set its material. This is the quickest way to test that it's working. Uh, before we kind of get into the, the sort of harder and more in-depth stuff. So it's going to start off as that pink delta grid color. So when we first click it, we want it to go to the uh, alias reference, and then we want it to go back to that delta gen reference. So it stays with the two colors that we, we want it to, to be. Um, so with that done, that should be this side of things done. And what we can do now is just drag this into the world. Like so. It's very big. Oh my days. But that's okay. We can we can scale it down. Wow, that's such a big cube. Uh, scale it. Oh, undo that. Click on the little lock and that will make sure it goes down in uniform. There we go. And um, the next thing we need to do is open up our third person character. This is where 
the main chunk of the code is going to go. And same thing with the cube BP. We need to go into that class settings at the top here. And we need to add in that interact BPI. That way we can now um, access the message for that when we're, when we're at the other side. But first things first, we want to get that um, input action reference. So let's put in uh, interact and we should get a add event. No, we want the enhanced action event here. So we get our usual input option. I'm going to come off the started and we're going to do a line trace by channel like so we're going to get our follow camera let's bring that down here we want to get the uh, world location and we also want to get forward vector and first things first the world get world location goes straight into the start we want to do a times uh wrong button there we go multiply for this vector but we want to change this pin to a float single precision and to do that you just right click on the bottom pin bottom left pin and it should give you the option to float single precision change that and i'm going to set this i tested this i thought 200 worked pretty well uh, and then what we just need to do is add those together and we add that into the end very simple but that should give you the option you want we want to break the out hit so pull off and just type break and you should get break hit result and then open it up and the thing we're after is this hit actor and all we need to do is type uh interact so from the hit actor pull out type interact and you should get interact message and what this is doing is uh, I will explain it if I can connect it up. Any item we add that class setting to will hold that interact ability. So this event will create this event on every item that can be picked up, every door that can be opened, every chest that can be opened, um, anything you can think of. Like if you wanted to open a window, it will all have this BP interact class uh, setting. And it will always hold this event interact. That way, whatever happens within this um, this uh, object, this uh, actor class, it will always run this whenever we hit it with this line trace. So we're going to fire this line trace, and I'm going to set this debug to persistent so we can see it in effect. We're going to, if we hit any, any kind of actor, any actor in the world with this line trace, it's going to check for this interact. Um, and what we're going to do is we're also going to do an is valid to make sure it is a valid actor that we're hitting, not just anything. Uh, and if that's true, then we can, we can go through. Um, and yeah, so it should just kind of complete this for what we're looking for. So let's give it a test. So if I press E, you can see the line trace is running from me to wherever I'm looking, basically, about 200 ahead of itself. And if I go up to this object and I click E on it now, it's interacting. And there's no collisions on this. There's no extra code. It's just checking to see if I hit it with this uh, line trace. Uh, and it's uh, doing its thing. Now, it's not a very long um, line trace. But you can see here where it's hit something and it's gone green. Uh, but obviously, if I step too far away, I can't pick it up. I have to be within a certain distance to do it. And I think 200 works pretty well. But again, play with this figure, this one here, that comes off the get forward vector to, to test the length that you want. If you want it to be longer, set it to like 250 or 300. If you want it to be shorter, set it to 150. The only thing I found with setting it to 150 is I found it was quite short. And um, I felt like I had to be right up next to the item to pick it up, whereas you kind of want to be able to look around and pick items up quick. But again, that's down to personal preference for you. So this is set up now. So from this point on, with our information and our interact, we can now essentially go ahead to start picking up some items and um, doing things with them. Um, 
obviously, if you have any questions, join the Discord. There's about 250 of us now that, that are, you know, all like-minded game developers, all with a goal in mind, and we, we do help each other out. So don't forget to join the Discord. Uh, you'll be very much welcome and a, an appreciated member of the of the community. And uh, we can obviously help you if you get stuck on anything in there. Uh, but other than that, for everyone else who's already been here before, thank you so much for following. Um, and thank you so much for, for supporting me. And I will see you in the next episode. Much love. Take care. Bye.